It has been just more than a month since the Supreme Court handed down an opinion which essentially ends affirmative action when it comes to college admissions. That means some universities will have to change course on policies they've had for decades. So the question is, what's the local impact? WATE 6 on your side. Legal analyst Greg Isaacs is here. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be here. Does the University of Tennessee have a uh, colorblind admission policy? No. Uh, as far as we know, from looking from the outside in, uh, there are only nine states that prohibit um, race-based uh, factoring in terms of admissions. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, 20 years ago, uh, with a, a lawsuit that uh, originated out of the Sixth Circuit we're in at a Michigan law school, uh, the Supreme Court said that it was okay to have uh, racial uh, considerations when you are interviewing applicants. Uh, and Sandra Day O'Connor wrote the majority opinion, but she said uh, under the Equal Protection Clause, if it's narrowly tailored, it's okay. But by 2028, uh, the, the playing field should be leveled. Fast forward, uh, University of North Carolina, Harvard, students for fair admissions. And this, this crosses uh, ethnic lines. It's mm -hmm. not just one group right. um, because they think that, that minorities are being discriminated against vis-a-vis -vis other minorities. Mm -hmm. But in that case, the Supreme Court said, stop. Equal protection means equal protection. Uh, Roberts wrote the opinion for the majority, a 6-3 and a 6-2. Mm -hmm. uh, Judge Kinsey Brown Jackson recused herself on the Harvard case. Uh, she was a recent grad. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, in the concurring opinion, they said, hey, Sandra Day O'Connor said uh, in a sunset provision, we're going to have equality by 2028. We'll just start it in 2028. But so now going forward, uh, states, Tennessee will be like California. Who would have thought that California, uh, known for being a bastion of, of liberal uh, politics, et cetera, would have uh, forbidden uh, race factoring uh, in admissions, and Tennessee uh, did. So now uh, when the 2028 uh, class rolls around, you can consider race as a consideration in someone's life experience, but it's simply not a box. Uh, that you can check to get some type of special consideration. It will be interesting, Lori, to see if those boxes are still going to exist because uh, if you do identify your race, does that create a presumption uh, that your equal protection rights are being violated? Right, and uh, you know, without affirmative action, let's go back to where we are right now, are there other ways until 2028 to level the playing field? Everybody just needs to be fair. Uh, look at people on their merits, but for us to say that people aren't discriminated against, uh, we know that's true. On the other hand, we know that there have been some tremendous strides for equality. So, you know, you have to have uh, the universities bringing their A game, their A people in making those decisions, and hopefully uh, everybody uh, will study hard and get into the college of their choice, and hopefully it's Rocky Top. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Greg. Now, we should mention on the day of the ruling at the end of June, University of Tennessee System President Randy Boyd tweeted, UT System is reviewing any potential impact of today's court decision. Our focus on access, retention, and engagement, as well as our commitment to the mission of the UT System remains unchanged to serve all Tennesseans and beyond through education, discovery, and outreach, end quote. If you have a legal question, send it to askisaacs at wate.com. And remember, we talk with Greg every Wednesday right here at 530 on WATE 6 on your side.